Now, astronomers are eagerly awaiting a celestial event that only happens only every 80 years or so. A star called T Core Boar, which you can't normally see with the naked eye, is expected to suddenly become much brighter and visible in the night sky. Our science editor, Rebecca Morell, has been to the Dark Skies Park in Banai Brakenyog to see why the astronomers there are so excited. In Banai Brakenyog, also known as the Brecon Beacons, astronomers are scanning the skies. They're eagerly awaiting a once in a lifetime event to see a celestial explosion revealing a star that's normally too faint for us to see. So I've got the telescope pointed at Corona Borealis and that's the constellation that this star is in. The star she's looking for is called T Corona Borealis, or T Core Bore for short. No. T Core Bore is dim at the T Core Bore is dim at the minute, so it's about magnitude 10 normally and that is well below what you can see with the naked eye. But that could all be about to change. Every 80 years or so, T Core Bore is predicted to light up the sky, but not for long. It's only going to be visible to the naked eye for a couple of days. Of course, if you've got a small pair of binoculars or a small telescope, you'll be able to see it for a little bit longer because you've got that magnifying tool. But I do think that its short stint in the sky makes it really special. T Corbor is actually two stars orbiting around each other. A small white dwarf, which is a dead star and a much larger red giant. The white dwarf has an immense gravitational pull and it's consistently dragging material away from the red giant. Over time, this material builds up until it explodes, releasing a huge amount of energy. And this makes T Corbor briefly appear much brighter in the night sky. The last time this happened was in 1946, when Michael Woodman was 15. The Newport schoolboy had stayed up late waiting for his dad to come home. So I looked out of my bedroom window, and there, in the ring of the Corona Borealis, second star down was bright, very bright. I thought, well, I've never seen that like that before. The following morning, I thought, well, I, I'll get in touch with the astronomer Royal. The Astronomer Royal wrote back and told him, remarkably, that he was the first person in the UK to have seen this. The star spotter became a star himself for a while, with a flurry of media interest and an interview on BBC Radio. It did give me certain notoriety, that's the word. And they used to say, he's a chap who saw the star. So who do you think that is? Who do you think that is? Michael Woodman's now 94. There are four generations of his family. Seeing T Core Bore again will put him in an exclusive club of just one. We're all looking at the skies again, and not, not only me, but the whole world, apparently. But if I see it, however many other people have seen it, I will be the only one who's seen it twice. I've got to keep breathing. <laughs> T Corona Borealis, which you can't see with the naked eye, is about here. It's going to be noticeable when it when it erupts. So I think there'll be a there'll be a you know a bright point. So for stargazers, are there any early signs that T Corbor is about to ignite into brightness? It seems that in the past this has dimmed a little bit before it's actually erupted, and there are signs that maybe at the moment it's just dipping a little bit in brightness. So maybe that's a hint that it's getting close to its eruption. There have been a few false alarms that T Core Bore was ready to erupt. But for now, astronomers will have to keep watching and waiting. The celestial fireworks will be worth it when they finally arrive. Rebecca Morell, BBC News, Banai Prakanyog. Well, one man who's watching and waiting is the astronomer David Williams Baldwin, who joins us now. How excited are you? I'm very excited. I've been uh, waiting patiently for the last couple of years. Um, to see if when it was going to go into outburst, go bang again. Um, how, sh how sure can we be that it's it's imminent? So this is uh, an odd one uh, in this sort of type of object because it shows a precursor dip about a year or so beforehand, and we started to see this in about spring of 2023. So it's actually a little bit overdue now. Um, so originally we thought it was going to go bang sometime between February and August this year. So it's at least three months overdue from when we thought it was uh, going to go bang. bang. Yeah. That sounds yeah. terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's um, with all the uh, mass that flows onto the white dwarf star, um, when it gets to a certain critical mass, 
Uh, it's like a thermonuclear explosion across the entirety of the star all in one go, which is why it uh, appears so bright in the night sky. So for anyone who does want to maybe be lucky enough to see this happen, how easy is it to predict that? What should they be looking for? Um, so it's hard for us astronomers to predict it. Um, but we have uh, a huge, there's a huge number of amateur astronomers across the world that are always uh, looking at it every night, um, putting, putting it out there for, for the rest of us astronomers to, to uh, work out whether it's going to go bang soon. But what they should be looking out for is um, probably alerts, and, and I'm sure certain when, once it does go bang, there'll be astronomers across the world going a little bit mad for it because there's <laughs> lots of us uh, eagerly awaiting it. And how wonderful for Michael, who we heard in that report, who spotted it as a teenage boy, yeah. and now he's hoping to see it for a second time. It's, it's stories like that that kind of bring what you do, astronomy, to, to life for the rest of it. It sort of makes it understandable for all of us. Ex yeah. Exactly. This is a, sort of a once-in-a-generation event, so the next time we expect this object to be uh, observable by the human eye um, is in the early 2100s. So um, to be able to see it not once but twice for Michael would be an amazing thing. So we're just hoping that it, it goes uh, into outburst soon. Yeah. Now, when you say visible to the human eye, do you mean with no equipment or do, would we need equipment? So at the moment, it's too faint to see without a really, really good pair of binoculars or a small telescope. When it does go into outburst, it will be naked eye visible. So it will be, it's, it'll be roughly the same brightness as Polaris, the North Star, um, when it does go into outburst. And it should be visible to the naked eye for several days. Um, and then after that, for about another week or so with, you know, some, some binoculars. For several days? OK, so yeah. even if we got a bad, foggy period or something, within a few days, there yeah, should be opportunities. Should be able to. And is it... All over the UK, an equal chance of being able to see it, weather dependent. Yeah, weather dependent. Um, anywhere in the UK, you should be able to see it. And how important is it that we talk about events like this in order to engage people in what they could be seeing when they look up to the sky? I think it's really important. Um, some people talk about astronomy as sort of the gateway into STEM subjects, um, so various science technology um, programmes. Um, and I think this particular sort of object, it's such a rare occurrence um, that it's, you know, worthwhile studying and getting a little bit of a sort of energy behind it to sort of see when it does go bang next. And I bring it back to Michael, the teenage boy again, but you can see there how it kind of changed exactly. his life. The profile of that inspired him and then now inspires other people like yourself. Yeah, exactly. And it's stories like that that made me want to become an astronomer when I was, you know, 15, 16 years old. And now I'm sort of here doing astronomy um, as a day to day job. So definitely. And for the absolute basics, what do we do? You know, when you look up in the sky, you say you're looking for Polaris, the North Star. How, where do we look? OK, so what you want to do is look for the, the plough. So you want to look for the handle of the plough and you want to go down to a bright star, um, which is uh, Arcturus. It's, it's bright and orange in the sky. And then you want to look due west and there should be a, a, like a backward C type uh, constellation. Uh, that's the constellation Corona Borealis. And it's in the bottom left of that uh, wow. part of the constellation that you, you will see uh, T Corbel. So all in the same kind of area, he said, technically, <laughs> of the sky, the around, around the, the plough in the north. Star. Yeah, yeah, so it's a bit... It's, you just have to go a little bit down to the plough. You'll see this... It's, Arcturus is really nice and bright and quite um, orange, so it's quite easy to, to spot. I was told to turn left by the plough in a country lane a couple of days ago <laughs> looking for a pub. That was a pub, <laughs> David, yeah. thank you very much indeed. Great to see you. Yes, thank Will you. you come back and talk us through it when it appears? Definitely. Great. That'd be good to see you. Thank you. I love that. We've now got, like, a little bit of a map to think about in the sky to try and find it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. Got my glasses on. Yeah, right, for sure. Uh, we've